This is part 14 of the basic Python programming tutorial for new and intermediate Blender users. I'm still using version 2.63a. Alright, so in this lesson what we'll do is we'll kind of clean up the code a little bit, redefine some variables to be more precise, and um, kind of work on our design just a little bit. And so first thing you notice down here in the window I have, I typed here print pi in parentheses, so this returns the value of pi. Well, the reason I did that is because when we were initially setting up the code, I just used, quick, used a quick and dirty version of 2pi right here at 6.28. But there's really a better way to do that so we're, so our numbers are more precise. So if later on we're testing for a particular low radian angle of measure, then we know it's an exact value each and every time. But if we're using 6.28 all by itself, that might not work if I'm dividing numbers, multiplying, things like that. So what I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to define 2pi differently. I'm going to define 2pi is equal to math.pi, the function, times 2.0. And then I'm going to change these to be equal to 2pi and 2pi like this. Alright, so now, now I have a much better uh, number to work with. And then I'm going to do some other things as well. Sometimes I just go back through the code and make sure that you know I'm calling things the way I want to call them as I as, as a design. So th this is called the design drawing function. Well, we're really making fountains, and you know these are this is going to be our Vegas style water fountain that we're making. So instead of the design drawing function, I'll call it the how about the fountain design function. like this and I'll call this I'll call it fountain design make it a little more meaningful and trust me in the long run this kind of stuff really helps because it allows you to look back and go you know just immediately you know what that routine is for All right, so it's for the fountain design what else do I have in here um, Increase the radial distance of the cube through the loop. Well, this I'm not really increasing the radial distance. This comment is uh, basically, I'll just call it set the radial distance. Set the radial distances for use within the loops. Initialize some variables create new materials, don't need those anymore because we did those up there in the color routine up there. Uh, get the active object, assign it a color, yes. Assign a name to each object, I added that comment in a minute ago, assign a name to each object in the scene. Um, this did say a moment ago, get active object, I've just changed these to active object instead. Uh, let's see particles. Don't need that space here. Don't remember how that got in there. Oh, so that's part of that. What the? Alright, so there's that there. And then, as far as the planes being added to the scene, we had done this little test. We were raising it up, you know, as we got to uh, the pi location around the circle, but we really don't need to do that, so I'm just going to... I'll get rid of those. Just don't need them. And what we'll do is we'll lay the planes on the surface. So the planes will essentially be our the positioning of our fountains heads at the surface of the water. All right, and so they can just all stay at uh, zero. Well, I have them sitting here at one, but we can change that. Just I was doing that for another test somewhere else. All right, and then. Start the drawing angle back at the center for each arm. Each arm, we'll just say for each outside fountain. And start the radial distance back at the center for each. Let's see, radial distance is one.
Oh, well, leave that for a second. Let me see. Okay, so that kind of cleans it up. So I'm always cleaning up code like this just to simplify it. So now that we have this 2pi redefined here as this, then we need to really change these. So it's not really, it's so really less than 2pi and less than 2pi like this. And then where else do I change that? So 2pi theta is equal to that. All right, that's good enough. And the reason I'm doing that is so in the previous lesson where we had actually looked at this other code and we were looking for the fountain based on the location you know, around the circle. Actually, I guess I could run that code here real quick. Let's see if I can see if we'll verify it. It runs. I think I'm in that window. Are I not in that window? Oh, maybe we'll do it inside. Let's see. Alt P. Well, oh, well, that's because I'm in the wrong routine. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're even going to call this. We'll call this main fountain design. Like that. So, uh, a good habit for me to be into is if I'm going to save the routine separately for use in other programs, I'll append the .py and then I'll save it. If I'm just using it within this routine and it's specific to this program, I just I won't put the .py extension on it. All right, so now let's run it. Uh oh, I've got an error. Let me see what I did wrong. Line 91, global name math is not defined. What do you mean math is not defined? Let me see. From math, import no. You can't really tell me that I have to import pi like this, can you? Do I really have to have it in? I could just import math, I guess, instead of from math, import those. So let's try the difference. Let's see. Let's run it. Oh, nope, still doesn't do it. Uh, math is not defined. Give me a break. How can math not be defined? Let's see if it knows about, maybe I don't need math.py. I've used so many different programming languages concurrently. I get these all confused. Oh, okay, there it is right there. Oh, yeah, and that was the other thing I had done. I had... Um, I shrunk down the radial distance. These used to be 35. This was 35. I changed it to 15. So I've crunched the fountains closer to each other within the scene like this. And I might even do a closer for the camera effects and for just building the entire scene like this. So now these should have the names that we were looking at earlier. Oh, so now they're huge long numbers. So we're going to have to do something about that because, oh, that's an issue. So I'm going to have to we'd have to do some hmm well actually we don't really need to do anything let's see let's look at the x-axis here so down in here if that's x this way positive x that's the first one so this should be 0 0 right here and it is and this should be 0 and 0.785 but it's a big long number so when we test we're not going to test per se for this big long number. We'll just test for, um, you know, pi divided by 4, right? So, yeah, it would be pi divided by 4. So, let's do that. Let's go into this routine. In fact, we'll, we'll go s snag some code from this other routine that was working so nicely, the f incrementing the first vertex. And right in here, where we were cycling through all the objects in here, and what else was this routine doing? Well, I'm just going to snarf this code right here real quick. I'm going to go bring it back into this other routine. I'm going to put them in its own little... See, that's fountain design. That's in knit colors. And then I'll just put it up. Let's see. Fountain design. Doesn't really matter where I define it. I'll just define it right here. Uh, I'll call this search for a particular fountain and so I'll call it fountain search and then I'm going to just paste that code in there that I just picked up from the other routine 
and then I'll have to this will have to come over and that'll have to come over and that'll have to come over and that'll come over sometimes it's easier if you keep the comments aligned as well just for readability purposes alright so in here so we have another function or method if you want to call it that called fountain search and so it's for all the objects in the scene but now instead of finding this we're going to find uh, we're going to search for mm. uh, so this is going to be a little tricky alright so you know what we're going to do with this real quick I'm going to take a copy of it but it's going to be more accurate so I really do want to do it this way I want accuracy before you know perfect readability so instead of finding fountain, in this case it was easy enough to put fountain 00 or fountain 0 0.785 because we were restricting it just to those uh, cutoff numbers. But now I really want to do it mathematically. So let's see if we can do this. Find, since it's within the comma, before the comma, so we're going to find fountain and a space. And let's see because that's what we when we were building the scene remember down in here when we were actually adding the objects to the scene I did it that way I added fountain and a space and then I added the first string number and another space and then the next number or the first radiant angle of measure and the next radiant angle of measure so I'm going to search it that way as well so in fact those were yeah theta theta okay so I need, I really want to look for a fountain and uh, will this work in the find function? Sure, it's got to work. Find fountain plus uh, the string of pi divided by 4.0 okay so a string of pi divided by 4.0 should be 3.14 divided by 4 is 0.75 but it would be you know a much more accurate representation of it like that so we're looking for that representation and if it f so we'll run that and we'll say if it finds it print the name to the console and the location and in the other we need to do something else to it well we don't need to do anything we'll just see if it actually finds it so it's called fountain search so let's come down here and at the end of this routine just this is outside the loop finishes so right here outside of the loop I'm going to call fountain search like this but I'll put it, yeah, I can do it there or there, it doesn't really matter. So just like I called main down here, I'll call fountain search. And so that should find it, should theoretically find it, and print it. And so we'll start it from scratch. So we don't have these in here. Let's see, let's get these guys. Let's X these out. Yikes. And then we'll run it. Alright, so it put them in the screen let's go look at the console and what did it print it says fountain e four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight so what it did if we look closely it found if this is our outer circle that's one that would be at zero radians and that would be 0.785 radians 1.57 radians etc 3.14 radians all those would be so what it found was the outer theta of 0.785 radians and then each individual one because they all started with 0.785 radians and that's why the code looked at it like this so it found it at found the zero so it worked just fine. All right. Well, so I hope that gives you an idea. Really, so now we have much more precision in our numbers all the way through instead of just using an arbitrary 6.28 or a 3.14 or something like that. And we'll always then compare things to 
either a pi or two pi location. All right, I hope that didn't throw you. It may have, but maybe not. And uh, that's for this lesson, because it's getting way too long already, and I'll see you in the next lesson.